Let's talk about image classification. What exactly is image classification? So by definition, image classification refers to labeling of the images to predefined classes, which simply means that we have a lot of images and we are labeling them. We are just telling it that, okay, this particular image is a cat image, then this image is a dog image, and this image is a bicycle, and this image is a computer image, and this image is a book. So we're labeling the images. And predefined classes simply means that the classes that are defined by us, cat, dog, book, bicycle, all of those are predefined classes. Now, when we are talking about image classification, we are also talking about a lot of different images. So over here, you can see a lot of different images of cats. And we have classified them, we have labeled these images as cat images. Though this is up to us as developers or as data scientists of labeling these images as cats. So we might have a folder called cats, which contain thousands of cats images, which are already labeled by us, suggesting that, well, this folder contains cat images. So what happens is that these cat images or any other images are passed through the image classification task, which we're going to cover a little bit later. And after that, we get a program that can recognize cats. Now, obviously, I'm just giving you an idea about cat images. It can be anything. It can be dogs. It can be a computer. It can be a table, a chair, any kind of images passing through the image classification task. And then we end up with a program that can recognize the cats. So let's talk about image classification tasks, like what are those tasks and what do they actually mean? So the first task in image classification is image pre-processing. Now this actually means that we'll be using computer vision uh, to improve the data, to improve the image. We might enhance the image. We might even resize the image because sometime, and you will see in the future, that the algorithms will only work if the image is of a certain size. So if you are taking an image with your iPhone or you have an image that is very, very large, then the image classification task or the image algorithms or the machine learning algorithm might not work correctly because it will say that, hey, you need to resize the image to a certain format. And you are going to see that later on when we are going to actually implement machine learning uh, you're going to see that we have to resize the image. The next up is detection of the object, which simply means that we are trying to find out the position of the object of interest. Because sometimes you take pictures and you might be looking for a bicycle, but there might be mountains or waterfalls or forest behind the bicycle. So we are only looking for the actual object, which basically means we're only looking for the important object, which is a bicycle. Next up is feature extraction and training. Now, this is a, one of the most important steps, and this is where we are going to extract the features out of that particular image. So these can be different pixels, RGB values, and these are the values that we're gonna take out or extract using either deep learning, neural networks, and many different techniques. And these values, these extraction points will be used for training. And the final thing is the actual classification of the object. So this basically means that it is a step which will allow us to categorize the detected objects into predefined classes. And this will allow us to basically say that this particular object is a cat and this particular object is a dog and, and, a, and a bicycle by finding different patterns in the target image. So this classification of an object is obviously a very important step because this is where we will classify the object that, okay, this particular object is a dog, cat, book, a coffee cup, a ball, things like that. And all of these steps together are called the image classification task. So now that we understand image classification task, let's go ahead and see that how we can utilize all of these 
knowledge and features to create a machine learning application which will allow us to do image classification. Since this section is about pre-existing models which have already been trained, the first question is that where should we find the model? Well, since we're using Swift, maybe we should search on Apple's website. And lucky for us, because Apple has a dedicated page for machine learning. If you go to developer.apple.com slash machine learning, you will land on this page where there's a lot of information about machine learning and different kind of frameworks that Apple has designed to accommodate machine learning. Let's go ahead and click on the models, which you can see right here on the top. And clicking on the models is going to take you to some pre-existing models that Apple has created. You can see there are quite a lot of models. You have classification model, which can classify the handwriting, like the number seven and all that stuff. And then you have image classification models like MobileNet, ResNet, SqueezeNet, and so on. Let's go ahead and take a look at the SqueezeNet model. So let's go ahead and click on the view models. And you can see the name of the model as well as the size of the model. And one thing to note about the size is that it's only five megabytes. Isn't that crazy that it's only five megabytes and it can actually detect thousands of different objects? Now, sometimes you wonder what kind of objects can squeeze that model can detect. You can see in the image, it is detecting a cheetah with 99.5% accuracy. Sometimes you can actually see in the model that what kind of different classifications it has, what kind of objects it can detect. So if I go ahead and search for SqueezeNet, you can see that I'm on the GitHub page of SqueezeNet and I can go ahead and check out different kind of classes associated with SqueezeNet. You can see it has 1000 classes of ImageNet. Let's go ahead and check out these different classes so if I click on these classes, these are the different things that can be detected with SqueezeNet. You can see it has a great gray owl that can be detected. It has even a lizard that can be detected. It has a African crocodile, American alligator, and so on. The list goes on and on and on. All right. Let's go back to our machine learning models page and download a model. Now you can obviously download any model that you like, but we will be dealing with the mobile net model, which has a little bit more classification of objects. So let's go ahead and download mobile net. Click on the view models and click on the download so we can download the model. Now, once the model has been downloaded, it is important that you open the model and check out the different things associated with the model. So this, if you open the model file and make sure that you have Xcode installed, obviously, then you will see that if you double click on the mobile net model or any model that you download, which is of ML model extension from the Apple website, you can open it up and you can check out details of the model, which are very important when you are actually writing implementation and code. The first thing will begin with the name of the model. So name of the model, classification, size of the model. Then we have the author. You can see the list of author and the description of the model. Set of 1001 categories such as trees, animals, food vehicles, and so on. And then the license, then the model class. Now the model class is actually very, very important because when you actually add this model to your Xcode project, it is going to create a class called MobileNet V2 automatically. But the most important thing for us is the input image. You can see over here, input. So you have to provide this model with an image and it has to be a specific size. And that size is actually 224 by 224. If it's in a different size, maybe it's like 640 by 480, 
then it's not going to detect the image and it's not going to provide any classification. Now take a look at what the model actually returns you because that's also very important. The output of the model right over here is actually two different things. You can see that it is returning you the class label properties, which is a dictionary, and also class label, which is a string. Class label is easy to understand because class label is simply the model is saying, well, I think it's a cat, or I think it's a dog, or I think it's an elephant, or I think it's a train. So that's kind of like the final result. The class label is more of a final result what the machine learning algorithm, what the model thinks that the image is. The class label props is basically a dictionary which contains a lot of different things that the model has to go through all the different classification, all the different entities, all the different elements and objects. And then it will also have the uh, percentage that, okay, if uh, this is an elephant and the percentage accuracy is 99%, okay, so it 100% looks like it's an elephant. But then I think it's also a wallet. So the picture of an elephant, it can also say that it's a wallet, but I'm only like 20% sure it's a wallet. And for an elephant picture, I can also say that it's a flower, but I only have a probability and confidence of 0.001%. All right, so this, these two properties are very, very important along with the input, which is the actual image. And you have to provide the image at the size of 224 by 224. So now that you have added the model, let's go ahead and see that how we can integrate the model into our iOS application. In the last lecture, you learned that how you can download the mobile net machine learning model from the Apple website. Now we are going to learn that how we can integrate that model into our iOS application. Go ahead and open up the Xcode project, which is called the Image Classification Swift UI, which is associated with the resources for this lecture. And the one that we are looking at is the starting point. So it should be in the start folder of the image classification folder. Now, if you run this application right now, you can see on the right hand side, this is a Swift UI application and it's already running. I have added a bunch of images. You can see a bananas, you can see a tiger, and you can see a bottle. But when you click on classify, well, it doesn't really do anything right now. So we have our basic layout, the interface, which is done. But when we try to classify, it doesn't do anything. The reason, of course, it doesn't do anything is that there's nothing going on in the button click of the classify button. Before even implementing this part, we have to go and get our model and add it to our image classification SIF UI project. So let's go ahead and open up our download folder. And after we add, uh, open up the download folder, we should be able to get the image classification. So let's go ahead and open up our download folder. There we go. And you can see mobile net model is right over here. We can simply drag the model into our application. And let's just say finish. Let's go ahead and click on the model and we can see the different details about the model. We have already gone over the name of the model, the type of the model, the size of the model, the author and so on. The important point over here is the class associated with the model. So this part right here. So the class name mobile net v2 is going to be automatically generated by Swift model class. You can actually see they actually say right over here, it will be automatically generated. And this will be our class that we will use to talk to the actual model and we will get these predictions which are listed right over here. So this is what we're going to get back. We're going to input an image which is size 224 by 224 and we are going to get output two things, class label and class label props. So let's go ahead and first try to create the instance of that class. So we are not going to do the prediction part right now over here. 
we'll do that in the next lecture because it does require a couple of more steps. But right now what we're going to do is we're simply going to see if that class even exists or not. So I'm going to go ahead and say let model equals to and when you start typing mobile net you will see that the name of the class appears. And now you can create an instance of the mobile net v2 class. And if you go over here into the classify function, you can now use the model, which is self.model, which is the mobile net v2 model. And you can see that it has different functions for predictions. And one of the functions that we really need is a prediction function where we have to pass in the image, but we have to pass in the image in the form of CV pixel buffer. What exactly is CV pixel buffer and how do we get it? That is exactly what we're going to do in the next lecture. So let's go ahead and see that how we can convert an image into a CV pixel buffer. And also remember that you have to resize the image because if you go to the mobile net V2, it is actually looking for very specific size. So you have to resize the image to 224 by 224. And that is all we're going to do in the next lecture. Okay, so we have the machine learning model with us, that's great, but we do need to figure out how can we resize our images to 224 by 224. And also, if you have noticed, we when we call the model and we call in the prediction, we will say model.prediction, you will see that it doesn't really take in a UI image. We have to pass in the CV pixel buffer. So how do we do those things? Well, the good news is that I have already written the code for that. So we can go ahead and simply start using those implementations. Let me go ahead and show you this file, which is called the UI image plus extensions. This particular file, the UI image extensions has nothing to do with the machine learning itself. The first function is resize, which simply you pass in the CG size and it will return you a new image with that particular size. That's pretty much it. This particular function, which is called toBuffer, takes in the image. Well, everything is takes in the image because everything is, all the functions are extensions on the UI image and it simply returns the CV pixel buffer. You don't really need to understand all of this stuff that what exactly is going on. Just think of it as we are having a UI image and we're trying to convert it to CV pixel buffer. And the reason we are doing that is that it is one of the arguments of the model.prediction function, which we will have to use. I really do hope that in the future, maybe Apple can introduce the CV pixel buffer conversion right into the UI image so that we don't have to create this function again. So now let's go ahead and jump into our content view. And inside the content view, you can see that the button is right over here, which is for classifying. But the button doesn't really have any kind of function or no code, nothing. And that is the one that we have to actually implement to get our classification working. So let me go ahead and call a function. We'll say self dot perform image classification. This is just the name of our function that we are going to be creating. And let's go at the top and create this particular function. We'll say private function classification. And the reason we are putting it private is that this function doesn't really have to be called from anywhere outside of the content view. Okay. So what should we do now? Inside the perform image classification, we first of all need to find out that what exactly is the index of the current image. So let's go ahead and first get the image based on the current index. You can see that the current index is a state property, which means that whenever we are going from next to previous, we are checking out the current index and we are assigning the current property. So let's go ahead and get that. We are going to say current image equals to photos, which is simply an array which contains the name of images. And we are going to pass in the current index. So this is going to give us the image 
from that particular, oh, well, the name of the image at least. It's going to give us just the name of the image because if you look over here, we have banana, tiger, and bottle. So we got the name of the image. The next thing we need to do is we need to get a UI image. So UI image, and we are going to be passing in the current image, which is basically the name. Maybe we should call this the current image name just to be more explicit. And let's go ahead and pass it right over here in the second argument. All right. Let resized image equals to image dot resize. You can see that we have to use ing over here. So image dot resize. And this resize to function is the one that we implemented in UI image plus extensions. So let's go ahead and pass in the CG size. I'm going to pass in the CG size providing the width, which is 224 and 224. Remember, the width 224 is actually coming from the model. It has to be the width 224 or else it's not going to work correctly. That's why. Let's go back again. Okay, so we got the resize image, hopefully. And now we can get the buffer, the CV pixel buffer. So we'll say resized, resized image dot two and then we'll say buffer. So this is going to give us the actual buffer. If that any of these things fail, then, well, we're not going to do anything at that point. All right. Okay, let's see what exactly is going on over here. And let's try to fix that first before we move on. All right, so the error was related to the resize to function. So let's go ahead and check out the resize to function and make sure it is returning UI image optional, not just UI image. So I just added the uh, question mark over here just to make sure that it's returning an optional. Great. So now hopefully we'll get the buffer and now we can get the output. So we will say try and then model dot prediction. So let's go ahead and do the prediction. And in this case, we do have the buffer, so we can simply pass in the buffer. This is going to return us some sort of an output. All right. Let's go ahead and first build the application just to see that we are on the right track. Once we have the output, now it is up to us that what do we want to do? If you remember and going to the model, the output will contain a couple of different things. You will have a class label props and the class label. Right now, we are simply going to use the class label, which is what the model thinks that the image is. So let's go ahead and use that. So first of all, we have to make sure that we will unwrap it if let output equals to output. So we will unwrap it. And now we can go ahead and simply display it. So I'm just going to say classification label. Let's see if we have that. So currently we don't really have any label. So let's go ahead and create the label. Not a big deal. We will put a label that will be displayed on the screen, which is called classification label. And now we can say self dot classification label. And we will simply assign the output dot class label. All right. Now, if you scroll down, you will see that right now we are displaying the text, which is nothing. Uh, this is where we want to actually display the final output. Like if this is a dog or this is a cat or this is something. Let's go ahead and say just the dog over here for time being. So you can see the label being appearing on the right hand side. Let's go ahead and also add a bit of a padding. All right. And we can also get a little bit of font for it. So let's say a large title so that this is the prediction is actually large. Now, obviously, we don't really want to display dog. We want to display whatever is in the classification label. So let's go ahead and simply put classification label over here. I'm just going to say classification label. There we go. Let's save it. And now let's go ahead and give it a try. Let's go ahead and run this application. And hopefully we'll be able to display the information when we click the classify button. So let's go ahead and run this application. Okay, so first object that we have air banana. So I'm just going to say classify and it says banana. That's awesome. Let's go to the next one. This looks like a tiger, but let's see what the machine learning model actually thinks. And you can see 
it does think this is a tiger. Let's go to the next one, a bottle, a water bottle. So all of them are actually correct. Now, obviously, we can add some images and which are not in the machine learning model. And so it will not be able to predict those things. It's not like the machine learning model can predict like everything in the world. That's not going to happen. It can only predict the things which it has been trained on. So if it is not trained on a coffee cup, then maybe it can say, well, it's a bottle because coffee cup bottle are a little bit similar. I mean, if you say a coffee cup, uh, it's not going to say it's a tiger because it's not similar, but a coffee cup is similar to a bottle or something else. So it might say that. So this is great and our application is working. Now in the next lecture, which is more of an optional lecture, uh, I would like to show you that what exactly is in the mobile net output, which is outputting the class label prop this person. Because we are simply using the class label, we don't know what exactly is in class label props. And what is inside class label props, you're going to find out in the next lecture. All right, so let's go ahead and check out what exactly is in class label props. So what we're gonna do is we are going to go over here in the perform image classification function. And we already know what's in class label. Class label simply means that this is the final output that what the machine learning model thinks that the image is, which is fine, which is great. But what exactly is in the other property? That's the only other property that we have. Well. Let's go ahead and check it out. So what we're going to do is we have to, first of all, let's comment this out for the time being. And we will say output dot, and you will say over here, class label props. You can see that this is a dictionary with a key with a string and the value is the double. Okay, that's good. Let's go ahead and also sort out. So let's go ahead and say sorted dictionary using the, the the actual value, the double value. But what are those things? Okay, so let's go ahead and check it out. Dollar sign zero dot one because we are talking about the actual value and not the key. And dollar sign one dot one. This is just how you use the keys uh, if you are trying to sort them out. Now, obviously, you don't really need to do that. You can also go ahead and uh, you know map them if you want to map. That's also fine. Uh, but right now we are doing this so that we can actually sort them in a uh, ascending order or depending on how you see it. So results equals to something. And let's go ahead and put out the results. Great. So what we're doing is and what exactly is in class level props is the different probabilities, meaning it's a dictionary. So it does have a key. So I'm just going to write it here it does have a key. So it might say for this image, it might say banana as the key. And the second value, which is of type double, is the confidence level. So how much confident you are that this is a banana. So right now it might be like 99.9%. .9 I'm this much confident that this is a banana. But if the machine learning model is saying like, oh, I'm like 10%, 10.5%, 4% that this is a banana, then it surely is not a banana. So what class label props actually hold is different probabilities and different uh, class labels uh, and with their probabilities. So let's go ahead and check it out. So what we're doing is we're kind of like sorting them so that on the results, we will get the highest probability on the top. Okay, let's uh, comment this one out. This is fine. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say result equals to results dot map. So sorted is going to return you an array. So we can actually use the result uh, the map function. And what we're going to do in the map function is we are going to go over the key and value because it's an array of dictionaries that we are going over. And what we will return is the actual name of the key. So that will be the actual class label, like a dog or a cat, and the probability associated with that. So we'll say value, and we'll just multiply it with 100 so that uh, you can see it in percentage amount, all right? And after that, since this is going to return an array, we will go ahead and join with a particular separator, 
which will be slash n. So basically it will be a string which is going in new line uh, and that's pretty much it and it's going to be displaying the key and the value. Okay, and finally we can go ahead and say over here class label classification equals to result which is now hopefully a string. All right, let's go ahead and build this application and now you might see the label being displayed over here but like a lot of stuff all right and it will not be scrollable because a label is not really scrollable so it will be all jumbled together but hopefully you'll be able to see what's going on here we go banana 84.25 percent that's still low it should know that this is a banana uh, i bet if i have used a single banana instead of a group of banana or what is it called i don't even know what this called like a bunch of bananas so if I would have used just a single banana, it might be a little bit more because it might have trained on a single banana instead of a group of bananas. You can see it also thinks this is a butter squash, but that percentage is only 0.69. Orange, look at that percentage, 0.39. So it's definitely not going to be an orange. Let's go ahead and check out the tiger. Oh, so tiger is 78.72. That's the highest percentage. And then there's something called Tiger Cat, which is 13.69. And then Lynx, it definitely does not look like a Lynx. It is 0.11. Let's go and check out the bottle. Water bottle, 73.70. Water jug, ooh, close, but only 17%. Nipple, pill bottle, perfume, all of these things. You can see that they are very, very low percentages. So the highest percentage in this case is water bottle, which kind of wins. Now, even though it's 73%, it's not that much, but you know, it's fine. It's at least it is telling us that this is a water bottle. So that is what is stored in the class label props, a dictionary, which has a key and a value. Key is just a name of the class label, like perfume or, you know, a bottle and a cup and these things. And the value is a probability the confidence level that what does the model think in percentage wise that this is a banana or this is an apple and so on. So in this section you learn about image classification but using the pre-existing models we did not really train our model on anything we simply got the model from the Apple machine learning website and we simply used it. Now in the next section, you are going to be training your own model. And not only that, but you will be picking the picture from the camera or you will be picking the picture from the photo library. All right, so let's go ahead and move to the next section where we will be discussing that how can we pick a picture from the camera or how can we pick a picture from the photo library and even train our own model using CreateML. So let's get started with that.